All right, here we go, the last unit, Introduction to Probability and Odds. So Joe tosses a coin 100 times, he gets 56 heads and 44 tails. According to this experiment, the probability of tossing a head is 56 out of 100, which can also be expressed as 56%, percent simply means out of 100, and as a decimal 0 0.56. And this is called, <coughs> excuse me, an experimental probability because he tossed the coin. So he's conducting an experiment. And probability is defined, well, I mean, down here, we'll do that down here. The theoretical probability of tossing a head is 50%. So if we just think about theoretical probabilities, just what are the possible outcomes? Well, you can get a head or a tail. So there are two possible outcomes head or tail. There's one event, which is that you'll toss a head. So if you do that 100 times, then 50 of those 100 times, in theory, you will get a head. 50 out of 100. Now, as a fraction, we can reduce that one half, uh, 0 0.5, and as a percentage, 50%. Probabilities can be expressed as a percent, and if they are, they go from 0 to 100. So in probabilities, you cannot give 110%. They can be expressed as a fraction or as a decimal. And if you're doing it as a decimal, probabilities go from 0 to 1. Uh, where 0 is that the event is never going to happen, and 1 is that the event is certain to happen. <clears throat> so the definition of probability, the probability of event A is the number of times event A occurs out of the total number of times. Um, or the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So usually I define probability as <coughs> yeah, still got that cough. favorable over total. And really what we mean is the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. Okay, and I'll often just say probability is favorable over total. Okay, and what that means is the number of favorable outcomes, which is, and favorable isn't good or bad. Favorable is simply the thing we want to happen. Um, a fair game is a game in which all of the players are equally likely to win. So if we are playing games with our friends, we want that to be a fair game. So everybody has the same chance of winning. Uh, the complement of the probability of an event A occurring is P of A, and we call that little guy prime, so A prime. <clears throat> it's just a apostrophe. Where the probability of A prime is 1 minus P of A. So P of A, the probability of the event occurring, and the probability of the event not occurring. So if you take those two probabilities, it happens or it doesn't happen, then that has to add up to 1. Okay, so you've taken into account every possible outcome. So in here, uh, this number of outcomes, if it was a percent, if this was 36 out of 100, then this would have to be uh, for 64 of 100, right? In order to add up to 100 of 100, which is 100%, and as a decimal, that's a 1. Odds. <clears throat> so odds, you've probably heard a lot about odds through your life, but not necessarily know what they mean. Odds express a level of confidence about the occurrence of an event. So we have the odds in favor, so the odds that something does happen. And it's the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes to the number of unfavorable outcomes. So N of A is the number of and the number of unfavorable and n of a plus n of a prime is going to equal the total number of possible outcomes, right? That's that total we talked about up here, total number of outcomes. Um, or it's the ratio of the probability the event occurs to the probability that the event does not occur. Um, you'll see this in the book a little bit. We're not going to use this one. We're going to stick with the number. Odds against. The odds against 
are <coughs> the ratio of the number of unfavorable outcomes to the number of favorable outcomes. Basically, you're just reversing this. So odds in favor, favorable to unfavorable, odds against, unfavorable to favorable. And again, or the ratio of the probabilities, and we're very rarely going to use that. If the odds in favor of an event occurring are m to n, then the odds against, okay, so remember, m, this will be favorable, favor, this will be unfavorable. So the odds against would be unfav, unfavorable to favorable. <clears throat> If the odds in favor of event A occurring are M to M, or the odds against are N to M, the probability of A is M, so probability is always favorable, and M plus N is total. So M will be the number of favorable events, and M plus N will be the total number of events. Okay, and it's always that, right? If it's odds against, that's your favorable. Okay, and probability is always favorable over total. Never unfavorable. Uh, Ms. McKay has a standard deck of 52 cards. She asks the student to choose one card without looking to determine the odds in favor of the student choosing a 10. Okay, so we think, how many 10s are there in the deck? There are four. Right, so the number of favorable, the number of tens in the deck is four. And how many non tens are in the deck, so this is unfavorable, is 48. And then what we'll do is, I like to express it this way, call this the raw odds, right? It's the actual count. There are four of these and 48. And then we reduce it and say one to 12. Okay, so they're both divisible by four, we reduce it. We're always going to express odds with. The colon in the middle basically has a ratio, and it is, in fact, the ratio of favorable to unfavorable. Probability of winning the school raffle is 1 out of 250. What are the odds of winning? Or the odds in favor? <clears throat> so, with the probability, this is favorable. So, we have one favorable event. Now, 250 is basically the total or the total number of tickets, which means there are 249 other tickets. So if you have one ticket, that's your favorable. There are 249 other tickets out there. So to convert a probability into odds, remember this is favorable and odds in favor, that goes first. And then this is the total, so we have to go the total minus this number to give us the unfavorable, which is 249. The probability of an Olympic athlete getting injured is 0.75. What are the odds in favor? Not really nice, right? In favor of, of getting injured. But favorable and unfavorable are not judgments as favorable is good. Favorable is just what is it we're looking to happen. All right, so probability is 0 0.75. Okay, now we can't do much with that as odds, right? So you can convert that to 75 out of 100 or recognize that it's 3 quarters. Okay, so what are the odds in favor? So three is in favor, in favor, and four is total. So the odds in favor are three to one. Okay, favorable, and then the three and the one is the total. Okay, odds in favor. And if we take that from here, the 0 0.75 it would be 75 to 25. 75 are favorable, and 100 minus 75 is unfavorable. Okay, so always remember the probability of the bottom number is the total. All of the graduates' names are put into a hat for a raffle for a free limo ride. The odds against the selected student being female are 17 to 20. Determine the probability that the randomly select Oh my God, how did that, how did that stay in there? Oh, horrible. It's in print now, whatever. Um, okay, uh, the odds against the student being female are 17 to 20. 
So unfavorable Okay, where are we? Right, so 20 is the number of female. Okay, so we say odds against being female. Odds against, that'll be female. That's male. And the total is 27. Okay, so with odds against, the thing, the odds against what, that's the what, the odds against being female. So determine the probability that the student will be female will be 20 out of 37. If there are 444 graduates, how many females are there? Well, if what we do is we take the probability times the number of graduates. Right, if we want to figure out how many there are. Okay, let's clear that. So 20 divided by 37, I'm just going to hit enter, let's just do that, times 444. So we can see the probability the student is female is 54%. And so how many females are there? There's 54% of that 444, which is 240. So there are 240 females. <coughs> <clears throat> the weather forecast predicts a 70% chance of rain tomorrow. What are the odds against rain? So if it's predicting 70% chance of rain, then the odds in favor of rain, right? 70% rain, 30% against rain. So what are the odds against rain? 30 to 70 and reduce 3 to 7. Okay, so 3 to seven. So odds in favor, the chance of rain, that, that would be of rain in favor of rain, 70 to 30, against rain, 30 to 70. Ms. McKay created two math games. Game A has odds against winning of four to three, and game B has odds against winning of five to four. Which game should a student choose to play so they are more likely to win? Okay, so odds against winning. So this is winning, okay, and that's the total. So the probability of winning game A, the probability of A is favorable, which is the last number, three over total. The probability of winning B, so the odds against winning, so favorable is last, so the probability of B is four out of nine total. Now, to compare these, because <clears throat> it's not so easy to compare three sevenths and four ninths, what we're going to do is basically convert them to a percent or a decimal. So three divided by seven is 0. 0.428, blah, blah, blah. So as a percent, 42.9 percent chance of winning. And four divided by nine, uh, 0. 0.4444. 4, 4, 4, 44.4%, uh, 44.4% 4 chance of winning. Okay, so odds against winning, so winning is the, is the favorable, it's unfavorable, it's favorable. 3, total, 7, odds against winning, 4, that's your favorable, right? When it's odds against, it's unfavorable to favorable. And your total is nine. So which game should a student choose to play? Game B has the higher probability of winning. Annie conducted a survey of students at her school and found that 37% of them regularly took the bus to school. Determine the odds in favor of a randomly chosen student regularly taking the bus to school. So in favor, 37. The total is 100. This will be 100 minus 37, so 37 to 63. <clears throat> now, does that reduce? I don't think so, but 37 divided by 63. So we'll do it as a fraction here, just because we can then 
tell this to convert it to a fracture, to a, a reduced fraction, and we see that 37 to 63 is in fact lowest terms. Three students, Drew, Eli, and Aaron, are in the running for captain of the school basketball team. A survey has shown that Drew has a 40% chance of being voted captain, and Eli has a 32%. Determine the odds in favor. So in favor, 40% chance, probability of 40 would be 42. So if it's 40 in favor, it's 60 against. This would be 4 to 6. This would be 2 to 3. Determine the odds against Eli being voted captain. So in this case, Eli being voted captain goes as the second number, right? That's favorable. Unfavorable, so it's 100 minus 32, which is 68. So 68 to 32, which is uh, reduce 34. Okay, so if I want to reduce this, I'm going to do it this way. 68 divided by 32, math, enter, enter. And we get 17 to 8. <coughs> so it's reduced. Now it's doing it as a fraction. We're always going to express it as a ratio. Determine the odds against Aaron being voted captain. Okay, so they're all in the running. So we have a 40% chance and a 32% chance, which together is 72%, which means that Aaron has a 28% chance. The odds against Aaron, okay, so his favorable, the 28 goes there, the 72 goes there, and 72 divided by 28. Math, 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 enter, enter is 18 to 7. So I have to reduce 18 to 7. The odds in favor of rain tomorrow are 2 to 3. State the probability that it will rain tomorrow. Okay, in favor, 2. Probability is favorable over total. Right? So 2 plus 3. Probability as a fraction, 2 over 5 as a decimal, 0 0.4 <clears throat> as a percent, that would be 40% if you wanted to go to a percent. Two coins are tossed. Determine the odds in favor of both landing on tails. Now, this isn't actually as easy as you might think it is because... We have to really think about if you toss two coins, what are the outcomes? And you could say, well, both heads, both tails, one of each. Now, looking at it that way, you might think, well, there's three things going on here, right? There are three outcomes, but there's not really three outcomes. We think about two coins. Two coins being tossed. Two coins being tossed. The first coin can come out as a head or a tail. If the first one is a head, the second one can come out as a head or a tail. If the first one is a tail, the second one can come out as a head or a tail. So the sample space following the tree diagram says you can get HH, two heads, HT, TH, TT. So the probability of getting uh, two heads is one out of four. Probability of both landing on tails is one. So the probability is one out of four. The odds in favor are one, one to three. So you could do that from the probability, one out of four, favorable. Unfavorable is going to be four minus one. Or from the sample space, Two T's, one outcome, right? There are three other outcomes. One favorable outcome, three unfavorable outcomes. Okay, last question. There are a number of blue marbles and green marbles in a bag. Jason is told that the odds against selecting a blue marble from the bag are four to seven. Odds against blue, that makes this blue. 
which of the following could not be the total number of marbles in the bag? So the total number, total, is 11 marbles. Okay, the total number, well, or the reduced total, right? When we go four to seven, it's a reduced total. That would be a total of 11 marbles. So we could have eight, to uh, let's double things up here, 8 to 14, which will be 22 marbles. So there could be 22 marbles. We could have 12 to 21, which is 33 marbles. We could have 16 to 28, which is 44 marbles. All right, so I went right. So we have 11 marbles, or 22, or 33, or 44. So you can't have 28, you can't have 27, you can't have 20, and you can't have 7. Not a good question. It is not a good question. So yeah, it'll change for next year, or not, because you have a video. <coughs> Whatever, right? But we have 7 blue, we have 4 green. So there's a total of 11 marbles in the bag. So bad question. It's a good way to end the first lesson on a bad question. All right. We'll, uh, we'll see you in the next one.